In our last video, we left off at the Ward Fountain, or Gateway, to the Pine Grove Park. So let's continue our stroll through the gateway and into the park and see some of the things that people enjoy that are no longer there. As we pass through this gateway and looked immediately to the right, and about this area right here, uh, this would have been where the wading pool was at Pine Grove Park, where many children got to enjoy the cool water on a hot day. There used to be a road that went down between the uh, wading pool and the tennis court. You can see it here. And we'll get to the tennis court in a minute. But uh, if you look out there, you can see also the smokestack from the water works there too as well. There were times on a very hot day that you could barely walk in the pool without bumping into somebody. The place was just really crowded. Once we leave the pool and cross the street that divided the park, on the other side was the tennis courts. And in the background you can see Soldier's Monument. This is the location it was originally at before they moved it. Notice what they're wearing to play tennis in here. And over the years, the tennis attire has certainly changed, as you can see by these couple pictures. The park has some beautiful paths that you could walk down. And you could walk over to the monument, or you could walk over to the pavilion. It was truly a beautiful area. And one of the favorite places to walk to was the monument. Next to the pavilion, the monument was probably the second most popular postcard of Port Huron. Here are a couple of real old ones that show the monument in its early days. The area surrounding the monument has changed over the different generations. Here we look at it and we see two large cannons on the wheels with a small cannon in between. And the cannonballs look like they're just stacked on top of each other or possibly wired. As you can see in this picture, this lady is sitting on the, the middle cannon in the picture. Notice in this picture many years later that the cannonballs are now encased in cement. And that's my dad and our dog pal there. And that's me sitting on top of the cannon there. And a few years later, that's me standing in front of the cannon. Notice the cannons no longer have wheels. They're mounted in cement. Yes, the cannons and the monument were a favorite place to get your picture taken. In this current picture, we uh, see the soldier's monument at its uh, new location. We still see the, the two large cannons and the small one. But where are the cannonballs? I wonder whatever happened to the cannonballs. Across the street from the monument, we have this scenic outlook that's familiar to most of us, I'm sure. But this used to be the city waterworks here. And as you can see by this cornerstone here, the city waterworks was built in 1872. And the waterworks has changed over the years. The waterworks that I remember is this building right here. The main difference between this waterworks that I grew up with and pictures of the, the waterworks taken earlier uh, in the 1800s uh, is basically the smokestack. Uh, the earlier pictures had the smokestack on the north side and now it's on the south side. And not only is it on the south side, but it's a different smokestack and it's much taller. Any pictures you see in Port Huron usually looking north, you can always see that smokestack in the background. This picture is looking south at the waterworks. This postcard was taken in front of the waterworks and you can see the train tracks that went through Pine Grove Park at one time. And you can also see the roundabout path that went around that tree in front of the waterworks as well. 
In this video clip of a movie my dad took in 1942, you get a pretty good idea what this waterworks looked like. And here you get to see the uh, smokestack and uh, how large it was, how tall. This section right here to the left, this is the uh, scenic overview right now that uh, we have at the park. And this is looking down uh, near the uh, water line. Of course, there was that steep hill that went down there. And when you drove down behind the water, like we're doing right now, it's always a little scary because you can see it's an open end there. Uh, nothing to stop you from going in the water. Notice the oil tanks there, the large oil tanks in the uh, Edison Inn area. We'll look at those uh, later in the video. This is the back of the waterworks. My grandfather used to work here, and so Mom and I would take his supper down uh, behind the waterworks at night and give it to him. The earlier postcards of the waterworks looks like this, more colorful and a nicer looking waterworks. I thought at first the artist was taking liberties with the colors, but uh, after looking at a particular black and white that you'll see in a second, it looks like there are contrasting colors right here in this picture. So it's a pretty nice looking waterworks. This rare photo here, I believe, could be the earliest picture of the waterworks. And it's uh, something I've never seen before, but it shows the cupola on the top of the roof which none of the postcards or any of the other pictures I've ever seen show, so that's kind of interesting. Also notice the, the uh, ship, several abreast uh, docks just beyond uh, the waterworks. Also notice the train tracks and that switch off right there. And Notice how close that track comes right to the top of the hill. And it's amazing that the erosion over the years from the weight and the vibration of the train uh, didn't cause a collapse of that track. Or maybe it did. All right, let's go back across the street now. In this area right here, this is where the pavilion used to be. The crown jewel of Pine Grove Park. The pavilion was a very popular postcard, and you'll see many different coloring of the postcards. Uh, some probably true and probably some not. But this was the original color of the postcard, the avocado uh, pavilion with the red shingle roof. Here's another color combination. And look how well the grounds are kept up in these postcards. Very nice. Here's a very bold postcard as far as coloring is concerned. And this one is a black and white picture. And then you can see in this one here, they colored it in. My parents loved the pavilion. They would go down every chance they got on a Sunday afternoon and listen to the bands. And my father made a model, as you can see here, of the pavilion. And this model was later donated to the museum. This was the color of the pavilion that I remember. It was kind of a dull brown when I was growing up. The pavilion was two stories high and it had restrooms and a concession stand on the ground floor. There was two large staircases that gave access to the upper floor where the band played his concerts. And the distinctive cupola was atop the structure which must have been about 50 feet tall. Five flags waved from the four peaks and from the top of the six window dome. It was quite a sight. When John Brown uh, did this article on the pavilion, he interviewed my mother. And this is what she said in the newspaper article. I have many fond memories of the old pavilion in Pine Grove Park. Some of the happiest days of my childhood were spent at the band concerts on Sunday afternoon. The pavilion was full of people, 
The park was crowded on Sunday afternoon back in those days. I remember I was eight and I lived close to the park and I would try to get there about 2.30 p.m. to watch bandsmen carry their instruments up the stairs of the pavilion. Cars would park close by. People would sit in their cars and listen to the music. I would be on the swing, keeping time with the music. And there was a refreshment stand underneath where they sold candy, ice cream, pop, sandwiches, and popcorn. It seemed like everyone was so happy and friendly. It was sad when they tore it down. It was such a beautiful place. There were beautiful flower beds all over the park, and shrubbery, and the swimming pool at the south end of the park. It is all just happy memories now, said Mrs. Davis. Here are a few of the earlier pictures of Pine Grove Park. brochure from 1900. It would appear that camping was allowed in the park. Here we have a camping scene with a group of people. And then uh, right over here we have some scenes as well. This is uh, inside the tent. It looks like a family. And then an outside shot right there. Here we have an early picture of the pavilion. And over here is an interesting picture. It looks like it was uh, taken shortly after the uh, beginning of the park. And you can see the, uh, the roughness of the park there and this rough path going through the park. So it's an unusual picture. Eventually the pavilion fell into disrepair. You can see from this picture how the trees and shrubbery have pretty much overtaken it. The band stopped playing, people stopped coming, and eventually it was torn down. After it was torn down, it was replaced with this. And if you notice that the bottom floor, uh, where the concession stand was still there. Matter of fact, the concession stand still stayed there, and eventually this place was torn down too. The swings my mother mentioned in that newspaper article when she was eight years old that she's swaying on, uh, these are the swings right here. And here uh, I was swinging on them too. And my aunt uh, was with me as well. But these swings are really high and they are attached to a tree limb at the top. And so uh, you could really have a lot of fun with those swings. There were two of these swings in the park. And there was small swings as well. Just to the north of the pavilion, uh, here you're looking down the, from the pavilion at the swings and also the teeter-totters and there's a merry-go-round. That was uh, just north of uh, the pavilion between the ballpark and the pavilion. And we can't forget the monkey bars. I can't remember anybody not enjoying the monkey bars. And I think these kids are enjoying them too. And of course, the ball field wasn't near as nice as it is today. You didn't have the uh, grounds kept up like they are today. You didn't have uh, the stands like you do today. Matter of fact, if you look at this picture here, you can actually see the spectator stands. I have a couple of picnic bench or a couple of picnic seats, and uh, it looks like a stool there that they're sitting on. And in this picture, you can see the uh, the newer uh, pavilion in the background. This appears to be a second uh, diamond or ball field out in the outfield. Just beyond the ball field on the first base side, you can see the horseshoe facilities. And here you can see the men tossing the horseshoes. Here I am drinking from the fountain. And the park had uh, three or four of these uh, located throughout the park. In our next video, we'll finish up with Pine Grove Park and move on northward.